Aviation and Training Command Sailor of the Year Recognition Ceremony. Would the guests please rise for the arrival in, of the official party, military personnel in uniform, cover. Bosun, strike four bells. Naval Chaplaincy School arriving. Bosun, strike six bells. Naval Education and Training Command arriving. Will the guests please remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Color Guard, parade the colors. Color Guard, retire the colors. Chaplain Varsoja will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose justice fills the world from the seabed into space, bless this ceremony in which we reward excellence and celebrate the gift of a fighting spirit that enables us to pour ourselves into our duties with all of our bodies and all of our minds. Make us thankful for the sacrifices and commitments of those with whom we serve. Fill us with devotion to those who are in harm's way and a determination to support them in every possible way. And when it's our turn to go forward and relieve them, go with us so that we may be bold. For the sake of the Republic, 
And in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Varsoja. Guests, please be seated. Military, uncover. <clears throat> Morning, Admiral Cherico, Admiral Nowakowski, Admiral Mattingly, commanding officers, executive officers, command master chiefs, family, friends, and distinguished guests. I am Master Chief Reed, and it is my honor to be your Master of Ceremonies for this most prestigious event. Thank you so much for being with us today. We are truly pleased to have you here, and I know your presence means a great deal to our finalists. We are here today to recognize four exceptional sailors and announce our selection of the 2023 Naval Education and Training Command Sailor of the Year. Each of these sailors are outstanding examples of the best and brightest our Navy has to offer. They should each be commended for their achievements, dedication, and commitment to the mission of their individual commands and the Navy as a whole. It is no small task they have made it this far. I am personally proud and honored to be here with them today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the Naval Education and Training Command Forest Master Chief Rick Mangle. Good morning, Admiral, commanding officers, CMCs, executive directors, shipmates, friends, and families. Today we honor the accomplishments of the 2023 Naval Education and Training Command Sailor of the Year finalists. Before we get into introductions and recognition of our finalists though, I'd first like to acknowledge the hard work of a few folks and give a shout out to a few groups of people. Thank you to the NETSI Headquarters Chiefs Mess, the NETSI Front Office, NETSI Media Department, and NETSI First Lieutenant for their efforts in bringing this event to fruition. Thank you to the Iwitzy Choir and Color Guard and to our side boys and bell ringer from Natsi. And thank you to the National Naval Aviation Museum for provide, providing us this fantastic venue for our ceremony. And lastly, a bravo Zulu and sincere thank you to Master Chief Matt Reed, Master Chief Rob Inigo, and YN1 Francisco Abreu for their efforts in planning and executing our entire Sailor of the Year program, and I would love for us all to give them a round of applause, please. Soon you will have standing before you four finalists drawn from the nominees of 21 Essex across the Netsi domain, a cadre of the sharpest sailors our domain has to offer. After screening packages, interviewing 21 stellar performers, and spending time with our four finalists, your board of eight Command Master Chiefs had the difficult task of identifying one winner. I will tell you, there is not one single winner here. They are all swinging hard, and they are all ready to be selected as the Netsi Sailor of the Year, and they are all ready to don the anchors of a Chief Petty Officer. Each of these sailors are outstanding examples of the best and brightest our Navy has to offer. Within NETSI, we recruit, train, and deliver those who serve our nation over the horizon and on the high seas, taking volunteer citizens from street to fleet, transforming them into highly skilled operational and combat-ready warfighters. This morning, we will present to you a small representation of the 11,216 NETSI First Class Petty Officers that make up our force of recruiters, recruit division commanders, Navy military training instructors, classroom instructors, and support staff that deliver warfighters to the fleet. These leaders should be commended for their achievements, dedication, and commitment to the mission of their individual commands, the NETSI force development domain, and the Navy as a whole. The competition was tough. I'm personally proud and honored to have been there in their presence this week and I know my fellow board members who are in the crowd will concur. So, without further delay, let's meet our finalists. Navy Diver First Class, Zachary Corrente. ND1 is stationed at Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center, Panama City Beach, Florida, 
where he serves as leading petty officer and high-risk instructor, supervising 12 instructors for 13 courses of instruction. His leadership culminated with the graduation of 190 officers and enlisted students, bolstering fleet manning for special program initial and advanced Navy enlisted classifications and designators. He was number one against three of the top performing sailors competing at his echelon level. Petty Officer Corinthe joined the Navy out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, and has nine years of service. <laughs> Aviation boasts made equipment first class, John Pintori, is stationed at Center for Naval Aviation Technical Training Detachment, Lakehurst, New Jersey. Where he serves as acting leading chief petty officer, he leads 11 instructors in the curriculum development and conveyance of seven advanced C school courses, which have yielded the delivery of 9,000 hours of classroom and laboratory instruction to 239 fleet sailors and nav air engineers. He was number one against 17 of the top performing sailors at his echelon level. Petty officer Pittori joined the Navy out of Omaha, Nebraska, and has 19 years of service. Musician first class, Colin Greggs, is stationed at the Naval School of Music in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where he serves as the leading petty officer. He is the fleet recognized subject matter expert in jazz improvisation, music theory, and guitar performance. He has a diverse musical skill set and is the only instructor certified to deliver high level instrumental instruction for his primary NEC. He was number one of three of the top performing sailors competing at his echelon level. Petty Officer Greggs joined the Navy out of Portsmouth, Virginia and has 14 years of service. <laughs> Bosun's mate first class, Brandon Tift, is stationed at Mariner Skills Training Center Pacific, San Diego and serves as the course and supervisor for the Bosun's mate division officer course. He leads 12 instructors in the delivery of instruction to 150 officers and enlisted students. He also is the leading petty officer for the seven meter rigid hull inflatable boats, overseeing all repairs, maintenance, and upkeep of five boats. Additionally, he is the go-to third and seven fleet master training specialist bosun's mate, subject matter expert. He was number one of, against 11 of the top performing sailors in his echelon level. Petty officer Tift joined the Navy out of Pace, Florida, and has seven years of service. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the fiscal year 2023 NETSI Sailor of the Year finalists. One more round of applause. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the 21st Commander of Naval Education and Training Command, Rear Admiral Cherico. Thanks, Force. Good morning, everybody. You didn't have to answer, Kaz, but that was nice of you. <laughs> that was a rhetorical good morning. What a great day. Some of you look sunburned. They've been here all week. Uh, we've had a command offsite for uh, my domain, and uh, we've had the benefit of listening to these uh, young men uh, provide their inputs, and it's uh, well valued and uh, well needed. I'm honored and blessed to be here recognizing the sustained superior performance of the finest sailors the Naval Education Training Demand has to offer. And you heard that a lot, has to offer, because we're part of a culture of service. So to put it into context, NETSI is the largest shore command in the United States Navy. We've got more than 1,640 subordinate locations, 29,000 strong workforce, and 40,000 sailors and officers assigned on any given day. We touch over 150,000 Navy personnel year over year. So with so many sailors in our command, this group of finalists is exclusive and elite and the best we have. They each have a critical role in ensuring when the Navy fights, we will fight and we will win decisively. I might change the command, I said kill them, but I just had to get it out again, so. 
Every sailor has a key responsibility to increase the lethality and survivability of our naval forces regardless of rate. And our goal is to deter our adversaries. And a well-educated and trained sailor is our competitive advantage for our Navy and the United States over any adversary. So I have learned over now 34 years of service that greatness does not happen in isolation. The history and heritage surrounding us here at the National Naval Aviation Museum reinforces that lesson. The visitors reinforce that lesson. Today's warfighting achievement are built on centuries of development and the hard work of entire units and commands. And I think we, not, we need to remember to thank not only the finalists for their sacrifice and hard work, but also to the family, friends, and each of our awardees' respective commands for supporting these sailors and allowing them to make incredible contributions to our mission. The accomplishments of our sailors are a direct reflection of the teamwork and dedication to the mission of each of the force development and commands in front of me. A critical investment in shaping and delivering the naval power we need. So with all that context being provided, please accept my grateful thanks to everyone in this audience, everyone watching online for the gift of your time and attention as we recognize the extraordinary performance of these naval leaders. To the leaders and staffs in front of me from the awardees' respective commands, I want to thank you too. We all know that our business is a team effort and the accomplishments of our sailors of the year are a direct reflection of the teamwork and dedication to the mission of each of your commands. These are shining examples of you. It's no secret that the United States faces unique and growing political and military challenges around the world. China threatens a larger conflict in the Taiwan Straits. Russia continues its aggressive invasion of Ukraine. Israel and Hamas are at war. Iran and their proxies, the Houthis, are interfering and targeting shipping in the Red Sea. The Navy needs its entire fleet and that's just not ships, everyone, to counter these threats. And at the same time, we're working through recruiting challenges. We need leadership to inspire the sailors to continue to serve, and these four men do it best. So while perhaps I once thought naval success came from our fighter pilots or aircraft carriers all around here, I have since learned that the Navy needs a wide array of sailors. And like I mentioned, supporting the Navy in different types of commands with different job titles, different skills, because that's how we counter the diverse array of threats facing our nation. Many of you have heard, I've got five children serving in the Naval Service, and they're all in different communities as well, not a fighter pilot among them. I've got a helicopter pilot, a P-8 NFO, a Navy nurse, a submariner, and a traitor to the family, a future Marine aviator. My children, like each of you here and in front of me, these four men each serve in different capacities across the fleet. While each of their jobs is vastly different, none of their service is more important than any other. So like my children, our finalists has come from all over Nazi's, Nazi's vast domain, AB1, ND1, ME1, BM1. You've heard of their accomplishments and their responsibilities by Forrest Mangle. And while it may sound like each of them has had a vastly different career, there are a few things they all have in common. You've maintained superior job performance while creating a positive command environment. You've worked to be inspirational in leadership, and that's essential in developing our force while also recruiting and retaining our talent. Each of you four up here remind us there's no one best job to serve in the Navy, but there is a right way to serve. Help others do their jobs better, safer, more efficiently, and more lethally. Play a critical role in retaining quality, because we need them to lead us in the future fight. You are the kind of sailors I hope my kids serve with. Your role model. So, in closing, I've spoken at dozens of ceremonies, recognizing Marines and sailors for their retirement, their service, changes of command. But I always bring to mind a quote of one of my favorite authors, James Michener. 
It's from his book, Chesapeake, and I share it in almost every speech. But I share it because it captures the essence of being a leader in the Naval Service. It does capture the dignity of doing your duty, in spite of the winds and prevailing seas. In many cases, the winds and currents are things well outside our control. We talked about that this week. And sometimes it's outside of our influence as well. So to start, Mitcher said, a ship like a human being moves best when it is slightly athwart the wind, when it has to keep its sails tight and attend to its course. Ships like men do poorly when the wind is directly behind, pushing them sloppily on their way so that no care is required in steering or in the management of her sails. The wind seems favorable for it blows in the direction one is heading. But actually it's destructive because it induces a relaxation in tension and skill. What is needed is a wind slightly opposed to the ship. For then tension can be maintained, juices can flow, and ideas can germinate. For ships like men, respond to challenge. All four of you are the best the Nazi domain has to offer and you embody this principle and live it every day. Each of you have stood thwart the wind and held true to our highest ideals. You've inspired your students. You've undeniably preserved the peace while preparing for war, ensuring that the naval service remains most lethal and survivable the world has ever and will ever see. So thank you for being an inspiration to me. Hey, Force, think it's time? Let's figure out who the winner is. Thank you, everybody. Is this thing on? So the NETC 2023 Sailor of the Year is Petty Officer Tift. Attention to award. Department of the Navy, this is to certify that the Secretary of the Navy has awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal to Bosun's Mate First Class Surface Warfare Brandon T. P. Tift, United States Navy Four. Meritorious service while serving as Bosun's Mate Corps Supervisor. Mariner Skills Training Center Pacific, San Diego, California from October 2022 to September 2023. Demonstrating exceptional leadership and managerial ability, Petty Officer Tift led 12 instructors in the delivery of six high-risk training course convenings to 150 students with an average grade of 92% and zero attrition. He provided critical support volunteering to teach a two-week course overseas to 24 students saving the Navy $96,000 while aiding in a sustaining deployability for multiple commands across 7th Fleet. His impact and leadership were unparalleled, which led to his selection as Naval Education and Training Command's 2023 Sailor of the Year by his unswerving determination, wise judgment, and complete dedication to duty. Petty Officer Tift reflected credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Given this 16th day of May, 2024, J.J. Cherico, Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy, Commander, Naval Education and Training Command. Just give my hand. I've <laughs> seen a couple of these at my house. Yeah, yeah. We recognize the superior leadership of the Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. The Sailor of the Year also receiving a Bronze Eagle presented by USAA and a, as well as a plaque. Will the three remaining finalists please join Admiral Cherico on the stage? All right. Great joy and great sadness. I told the team uh, when they informed me of the selection, the sadness is all four of these men 
are outstanding and deserve it. So uh, it's a bit of a consolation, but you three gentlemen are outstanding performers, so thank you. The three finalists will also receive a plaque and a crystal eagle. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you for attending. Our Sailor of the Year and finalists will come to the lower front center of stage. Please come up there and give them a handshake and a hearty congratulations. Uh, for ease of order, we'll move from left to right. Thank you again for attending. <laughs>